it is vital to keep in mind that all industry requires some form of fuel to function. Since the first industrial revolution, oil has been that fuel. But as climate change keeps wrecking havoc on our ecosystem, it becomes necessary to not just switch to more eco-friendly fuel, but to also try and clean up the mess we have already made. Uh, hi, we're here with uh, Benedict Stefansson, the Director of Business Development with Carbon Recycling International and we're gonna learn about some of the ways that they're using carbon that is produced as a waste from the energy plant in House Orca. Yes, uh, so carbon recycling is actually uh, going on 16 years mm -hmm. this year. Uh, started by a group of four entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. two were American and uh, two were Icelanders. Mm -hmm. um, they then decided to, to start looking into the option of using CO2 mm -hmm. as a raw material to, to do useful things. Mm -hmm. So instead of looking at it just as a problem, right. which it is, of course, uh, in terms of climate change, mm -hmm. we need a lot of carbon in, in our processes. Uh, the carbon is in our fuels, etc. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we want, that, that's why it's called carbon recycling. Mm -hmm. um, I joined the company in 2010, so it's uh, about 11 years since I joined. Mm -hmm. That was when the company was sort of ramping up to, to start uh, investing and starting to, uh, to build the first plant mm -hmm. in Svartsengi. Mm -hmm. why, why Iceland? What is the reason for starting it here? I think, you know, this idea that you could actually make uh, chemicals and fuels out of recycled CO2 had actually been sort of bouncing around. But mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we are going to go into direct competition with some of the cheapest stuff on Earth, which is mm -hmm. natural gas, natural. coal and, and oil. So it need, you needed about a lot of courage to start actually fiddling with this mm -hmm. and trying to get into this very vast system. Mm -hmm. um, so Icelanders have this spirit <laughs> that mm -hmm. we sort of, certain, sometimes can take on unsurmountable tasks. Plus also, of course, we, are, we have abundant uh, renewable energy. So one of the key uh, features or key ingredients for this is to, to be able to show that your entire life cycle, that what you're replacing you're doing it with renewable energy. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, in Svartsengi, what we have is this unique situation in which that geothermal uh, power actually brings some CO2 to the surface mm -hmm. from the bottom of the earth. And uh, so you can get the CO2 from the power plant mm -hmm. and you have a power plant that also, of course, gives you 100% right. renewable energy. This is actually pulling a waste from the geothermal energy and then converting that into something of use, which is uh, methanol in your case, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, are there other byproducts that you use? Are, are the, the, fa the plant that is in Svartsengi, uh, what, what else does it produce? Production actually is just one element. Of one element. Methanol. Methanol. So methanol yeah. is, a, is a chemical, yeah. uh, but it's also used as a fuel. Mm -hmm. And it's very fungible. So there's a, after ammonia, which goes into fertilizer production, mm -hmm. methanol is the most traded chemical on Earth. Mm -hmm. And it is actually very global. So it's made out of different raw materials uh, all, all across the world and then shipped. So there's a vast infrastructure to carry it and distribute it, mm -hmm. which is going to be very important to build up this uh, industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the ingredients that go in, actually, the simplicity of it is actually quite extraordinary. Mm -hmm. you, you just need CO2 and hydrogen, yeah. and then you're good to go. And that was the innovation that came from the company, is the ability to be able to synthesize this material out of those two components. Well, you've had, uh, in the last 16 years, uh, other investors and others who have come into this. So where, where are the big uh, facilities that you are investing in now? We built a plant in Iceland, but it, it actually was used to, to, to make methanol and to sell it all over the world. Mm -hmm. But that was not the intent, basically, to become uh, all built on an operate type of company. Mm -hmm. What we wanted to become was basically a technology provider and sure. an exporter of Icelandic know-how. Uh, Value-added know-how on top of what the geothermal industry, for example, mm -hmm. has been doing. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where we are today, and uh, the projects that we're engaged in are essentially right now in two regions. So one is China, mm -hmm. where we uh, several years ago got a key investor from China, a Chinese automaker, mm -hmm. which was very interested in promoting uh, methanol as a fuel within China. Mm -hmm. And now we're doing projects there where we have paying clients mm -hmm. who buy our technology. Mm -hmm. So we set up a plant for them. And mm -hmm. we have actually two projects already underway. Mm -hmm. Each of those projects is 25 times bigger than the plant in Iceland. Yeah, okay. And that's gonna be going forward sort of the business model. We, we come in, we build a plant, and we hand you the keys mm -hmm. to operate. Sure. However, we're also here in Europe engaged more directly in project development, so mm -hmm. uh, taking a bit of more, more active role in setting the project up. 
And that is because you have to get together sort of uh, three distinct groups of, mm -hmm. uh, of stakeholders. It's the energy, mm -hmm. uh, it's the, uh, the mission source, mm -hmm. and then finally the off-taker who pays, you know, in the end for, for, for the revenues. Right. Uh, I mean, so the most uh, obvious question now, part of the circular economy is around climate change and using fossil fuel versus not using fossil fuel. What's your take on that? Because methanol is a kind of a fossil fuel. You are burning carbon to produce energy. Yeah, it's absolutely not fossil in the sense that uh, you are introducing new carbon into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's a very important fact. You know, you even if we take CO two that comes from industry, mm -hmm. which today there, there are many types of industry where it's unavoidable mm -hmm. that you will release carbon. Mm -hmm. uh, Parasilicon, for example, which is also an industry in Iceland, we are doing a project in in in, in Norway with ferrosilicon. And there will not be any way to replace the, the carbon material that goes into the process. Mm -hmm. So by taking that CO2, what we're basically doing is that instead of landfilling it mm -hmm. in the atmosphere, mm -hmm. we're going to borrow it and take it one step further and replace other materials that would have caused people mm -hmm. to go for more coal, more natural gas and more oil. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the, the, if you look at this in, in the, the overall scope of it, you know, in the life cycle of this product, we're offsetting. The, the release of new CO2 in the atmosphere. Uh, I mean, you know, of course, uh, the the idea of this came and originated in Iceland, but the chemistry, from what I know, was well known. Mm -hmm. And uh, now uh, big industrialized countries like China, India, others are probably going to use similar technologies. So how is this, um, you know, how do you kind of get into those kind of, conversations. Right. The, the concept of, of uh, synthesizing CO2 and, and hydrogen together, as, as, you, as you alluded to, was basically known in the academic literature. Mm -hmm. So now we took the step with a bit of courage to, to develop it further and make it industrial. And, and we're, of course, going to be building on this lead mm -hmm. that we have already. So many other companies have experience with uh, different types of gas and so on. But you have to, def you have to if you're starting from scratch with these two uh, ingredients, then you have to have a different approach. Mm -hmm. So that's why these clients, for example, in China are coming to us and asking us to do this because they cannot readily buy this technology from anybody. Hydrogen is uh, very hot in terms of uh, industries and uh, economies wanting to use that as an energy source. Mm -hmm. uh, does this technology that you have can be used in just hydrogen production as well? So we take hydrogen and we, we, oh, okay. we do a so input of in, it. In your process, okay. Yeah. And, and hydrogen, of course, has lots of uses. As a transport fuel, it has some limitations because it's really hard to, to manage the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. you, know, it's, uh, you have to compress it, mm -hmm. liquefy it, uh, keep it on refrigeration, and transport it that way. Mm -hmm. So, the, for example, in terms of energy density, the amount of uh, material you need to tra transport a certain amount of energy you know, the, it's not very advantageous. Mm -hmm. So you can think of methanol, for example, as being liquid mm -hmm. hydrogen. It's, sure. it's the easiest way to liquefy hydrogen without using refrigeration. Okay. And so that's why, for example, the marine industry mm -hmm. is now quickly adopting methanol as the first sort of alternative fuel to oil. Mm -hmm. uh, companies like Maersk, for example, the, mm -hmm. the large, largest shipping company in the world, has just ordered uh, 12 of the largest ships on earth you know for to transport containers that are going to be running on methanol okay because they think you know their clients are demanding a lower carbon footprint for transport mm -hmm. and that's this is the way for them to deliver that value yeah, yeah. Um, I, I i refer to the the circular economy and your plant is very close to the Hawasorka facility how what is the collaboration between these two organizations how do you uh, work together. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty unique collaboration, uh, something that probably would not have been so easy to set up in other countries. So how is Orca had to allow us basically to take our pipe and plug ourselves into uh, kind of valves on their own um, uh, turbines. Mm -hmm. And so, or chimneys rather, mm -hmm. you know, where they release the uh, CO2 and sulfur that comes up with the uh, geothermal resource. Mm -hmm. And so we, we basically take that raw gas mm -hmm. through our pipe underground into our plant. And then we have equipment that actually strips out the uh, sulfur compounds and takes out pure CO2. So Carbon Recycling International is this company that actually was able to transform a waste that is carbon that is coming out of the power plant and use that to make energy for today. Uh, methanol. 
And I do believe that their technology is now being used world over to convert carbon into useful energy source that can be used today, which is pretty fascinating. All of this started in this Reykjanes Peninsula with the view that there is no waste, that we can actually use every resource. That is circular economy.